Halo semuanya, uh, selamat sore. Sebelum kita mulai, saya ingin memberitahukan untuk teman-teman yang ingin menggunakan fitur bahasa Indonesia, ada tombol interpretation di sebelah kanan bawah, itu bisa ditekan untuk menginterpretasi dari bahasa Inggris ke bahasa Indonesia. Mari kita mulai. So, chili juice as a food flavor and seasoning complement in some regions in Southeast Asia is immensely popular. What about in Germany? Do Germans also use chili in their food every day as in Southeast Asia? Chili is about food and culture in Southeast Asia. Its influence on gastronomy is evident in special menus characteristic of the different Southeast Asian cultures. Chili also affects the economy. For example, in Indonesia, an increase in chili prices may impact inflation, especially with respect to food, beverages, and tobacco. So, hence, here we are going to talk about the chili. And before, I'm going to uh, read about the uh, bio of uh, our respectfully guest. We have William Mongso, an award-winning culinary expert in Indonesia who is also a cooking consultant, author of books, and presenter of several popular TV programs. Also, we have Ibu Patty Elliott, an Indonesian cookbook author, culinary teacher, and self-taught chef. She has pioneered a modern approach to Indonesian culinary traditions through cookbooks, newspaper columns, and magazine articles, and has worked with Indonesian inter international chefs in leading restaurants and hotels in Jakarta and several other countries. We also have Vincent Rumah Loine, a visual artist that is a contemporary artist who playfully interrogates the social and mundane fabric of society. Vincent uh, also works for Sedekah Benih. Sedekah Benih is a collaborative project initiated by Vincent himself and Mang Dian that combines art, local wisdom, activism, and music that discusses urban farming in Bandung in West Java. Also, we have Dao Piu Putin, judge of Master Chef Myanmar. She is an entrepreneur with over 15 years of experience in the hospitality sector, social enterprise, and retail. If you have ever heard of Yangon Big House, she is one of the co founder Also, last but not least, Alexander Hicks, a chili expert. He is from Germany, started out planting 13 different varieties of chili, and in 2006 already counted 375 varieties from all over the world. So it's going to be very spicy and interesting topic to talk about today. And uh, I am Ade Putri. I'll be your host for today. Okay, maybe we start about uh, from Indonesian food. Om William, I have just read that you said sambal is a state of mind in one of an interview. Can you please describe uh, what you meant by that? Indonesian practically before they eat they might think of sambal first before they taste the food. So when they travel, they always had to, to hiding a, at least among of their favorite sambal in their pocket, just to drip on the food wherever they went. So this is, this is a state of mind. It's in other places, they, they will go and eat and discover the food. But because of this state of mind, they will never think of to taste the food first before they think that they have on hand the sambal with them. This is the basic thinking applied to a lot of Indonesian, but not all. But not all. Okay, Ibu Peti, you've been traveling around the world and you don't live in Indonesia anymore. But how do you bring the spicy foods to abroad. Maybe you can share some stories. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, as, as, uh, chili is one of the key ingredients in Indonesia cooking. And of course, to uh, introduce or to promote Indonesian uh, cooking overseas, we still need the sambal, which is the chili. But 
in my case, I think we have to have uh, adaptation as well because the level of uh, sambal or chili that we Indonesian enjoy in Indonesia, I think is different than people in Europe or specifically in England. So of course I reduce the chili, you know, especially where I was born in Manado is well known, one of the spicy uh, uh, food in Indonesia. So uh, for that, of course, I have to kind of uh, adapt with uh, the UK flavor, but I must say, in the last, let's say, five years, people more and more daring and more, um, what is it, like adventurous. They really want really spicy food, you know? So sometimes it depends on my event. If I can see the audience want to have authentic, I will give spicy summer. But of course, in general, the chili flavor or the chili uh, spicy level is different than in Indonesia. Okay, thank you, Ibu. Now we have Vincent. Vincent, I know you're an artist, but in this case, I just want to know your relationship with spicy foods. <laughs> My relationship with spicy food is not really good, actually. <laughs> uh, so this is this is what I'm 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 trying to uh, explain about how spiciness can get into your mind, not only in your stomach. Like this is something that uh, going into your giving your uh, experience, you know, that you can remember. Uh, for many uh, years, uh, so so my relations. I, I don't eat many uh, spicy food, but now I'm in uh, Europe now. But I mm -hmm. bring sambal on my pocket because this is something that really important to make me remember my hometown. Even though I don't I don't eat it. So through my uh, practice, like I try to combine people through the experience of eating spicy food, so people can start to uh, communicate without complicating stuff. Like today, there are so many things happen in the floating in the air, like news, this kind of thing. But once I bring the sambal or the chili chili plants, everyone get the same collective memories. And then starting from there, scientists coming and then musician coming and then chef may be coming in the future. So this kind of thing that I I, I have a relation with the, with, the, with, with the spicy and chili. And I also working with the community and I see the community always talking about sambal. And when mm -hmm. the, the price of sambal rise around 100 rupiah, it's really small. The mood of the society changing. And also I, I there is some people who, who, who talk to me that if you want to find a good wife, find the one who really make good sambal. <laughs> Don't care about other uh, food, but if she good with this, then then fine so it's really interesting like trying to get this information about sambal and spicy food not only the problem with the stomach but also the psychology so that's my i'm trying to find a way here europe and indonesia now to find the the connection through chili and spiciness okay really interesting what about you pupiotin Maybe you can start telling us the story about the spicy food in Myanmar. Yeah, uh, we are also like for Myanmar people, spicy, especially chili, it's uh, something to remember your country if you are especially abroad. And like spice thing app, that's, that's the way, you know, like, Whatever food we are eating, especially like in Europe and West, uh, if you feel like not really tasty or not up to your part, we try to find in abroad, it's easiest is chili powder, chili flakes, you know? So what, like we just add chili powder, chili flakes, and you can feel, taste home, you know? Like for me, I think also most of the Myanmar people try to add chili flakes in the pasta, like uh, bologna, for example, and it's too European, too meat, too much meat, then we add chili powder and we taste like our, there's, we call like noodle salad, kasueto. So it tastes quite exactly the same like kasueto. So just spice up, you know, whatever food we can eat or not adapted, we just spice up with chili powder. So we are 
more like uh, using more dry or roasted chili for daily than fresh chili because it's for level up, you know, fresh chili is, you need to know how to make and balance. It's more difficult. So chili powder, it's the way we spice up every food we eat, you know, to be closer to home. So chili, it's like, make you like home, I think. <laughs> okay. So five of us are from Southeast Asia. So we're very familiar with all the spicy food. Chili, mm, every day, every single damn day. But this guy, Alex, Alex is from Germany. And I read about his bio, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Alex, you started to eat spicy, I think like the, the chili, the hot sauce, when you were one year old. Is that true? A little bit less than one year old. Not sure. my parents are not sure anymore if it's six months or nine months old, but around that time, yeah. Okay, so it's interesting because most of us in Southeast Asia, we would think like all people in uh, European, especially Germany, they don't eat spicy food. But you are a chili expert. Maybe you can start telling stories about why are you here and why are you choosing chili? at the very first time? Like my, uh, like the others already said, chilies is a state of mind, yes? No good conversations ever started about around bl bland food. About spicy food you can talk and you can connect over. It's just, it's just something totally different. If you come to somebody and said, I ate a bland food somewhere, they would say, yeah, okay, never mind, whatever. Yeah, but if you then go into the deep depth about the different peppers, how it tasted, and so on, then you can connect. And this, I would call it a trend, started in Germany way, way back. We used to have like uh, a lot of Italian restaurants and Greek restaurants where they would also serve a little bit hotter food and the people would know, I'm going to go to the Italian pizza place and get some hot, uh, hot peppers on my pizza and or I will visit my favorite Greek restaurant and so on. But in the meantime, we have more ethnical kitchens, uh, ethnical guest uh, restaurants here. And for that, more and more people are getting interested in these topics. And also, uh, having peppers or chilies with you to feel at home in Germany, it's a little bit the way around, a different way around. We like to eat spicy food, so we don't feel at home. That we feel like we're discovering the world. <laughs> like many people discovered the world, they went overseas, overboard, and uh, checked out different uh, cultures, different cuisines, and then they came back home and said, "I am missing this feeling. I want this feeling back." And then they try to relive this feeling, try to cook some spicy dishes, and then they come to the conclusion. It is just not the same because I don't have the authentic pepper, authentic chili. And then they look around. Where can I get it? Where can I get seeds? Where can I get my pots? Where can I get the stuff? And then they figure out, I'm just going to grow it myself. And then they start growing themselves. And that's the same what happened with me. I started cooking with uh, chilies when I was 14 years old um, and could only get the stuff that I could get in the supermarket and I was like ah, there's more more to find and that's when I started growing them myself started like with 13 different varieties and now yeah a few thousands are growing every year or not every year but most of the years and then it's about yeah finding what can I do with them we, like you said, we don't have this spicy, uh, traditional spicy food, but more and more people are finding out we can spice up our, our food ourselves. We can make spicy German cuisine. We just have to find the right peppers that are in the right harmony with the, with the food. And for that, many people are now into this spicy food uh, topic. Mm. We have like... Uh, a big uh, pepper forum where over 8,000 people talk about chilies every day. We have big uh, Facebook communities with almost 10,000 different people that speak German and uh, discuss chili topics every day. So wow. 
it is really going somewhere. And also many people that are not in the depth uh, inside, they are still uh, being um, getting more and more knowledge about it. And for that, it's making it's more and more fun because you can talk to everybody and everybody knows somebody who eats spicy or they eat spicy themselves or they went went to visit some country where they ate something really nice. So it's really, yeah, something that I can talk about the whole day. <laughs> uh, I have one question really want to ask you as a mom and parents, you know, what is your first chili food you eat when you were around six months? <laughs> I don't know what... It was a hot. It was a hot salsa, a hot Mexican salsa. Salsa at yeah, when you and it was just food. You eat salsa. Your parents let you eat salsa. We went to a Mexican restaurant, and my father wanted to check out what the baby says about spicy yeah, yeah, food. <laughs> and the story goes: I had one chip and ate the whole bowl of salsa. Oh my! And every day, as I have, I have. Uh, two siblings and every time we would eat when I also when I was small I would also want all, always wanted more spice than them yeah because even for Asian I think we won't let our kids go near chili until like they are like five six I guess you know I don't know in Indonesia but I mean we are worried like we'll be too too strong you know <laughs> <laughs> But so uh, good to know that like, six month old can eat spicy food. Very very unusual. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lucky you. But, but since Alex. but since I'm growing so much different chilies, my kids also experience hot food, mostly by mistake. Also, it's like if you tell a kid, "Don't eat this," they will try that. <laughs> so both mm -hmm. my son and my daughter both had these experiences also at a young age, but they didn't get hooked on it. Like me, they like to eat hot food. When I cook and say it is hot, they always complain it's not hot enough. If I say it's not hot, they also always complain I made it too hot. So you trick <laughs> them to eat spicy food? Like you said, like, don't eat that, it's too spicy for you and they eat it. Yeah, I like like fresh peppers. I, uh, I mm -hmm. when I pick fresh peppers, I have a big bowl, and then they it would come around. I think my daughter was around also one and a half years old, and I said, "Don't eat it, don't taste it." And then afterwards, I heard her crying, and she was like, "No, I didn't eat it, but there was definitely she ate it." Yeah. Yeah, spicy food is like really tempting in a way. Sometimes like working differently in our brain, like if we can see. So many challenges and competition, like eating spiciness, you know, spicy food, not like sweet or salty. People like going, ah, not really tempting. But once it's said, like, test your level of spicy that you can eat, everyone want to try, even though they're going to end up in the hospital after the, after the, after the, after eating it. But this kind of temptation in the spiciness that work, I don't know, work differently in our brain. So it's like, making us want to try like the children and then and then we found out like we we end up like really really hot like we need to drink a lot of water but it's still a good experience the temptation so, so you that's think what I, uh, chili is addictive i think so I, i think so because yeah but it's also uh, not um physical addicting you don't your, your body is not addicted to it <clears throat> your brain is addicted to it and that's yeah, yeah, the good yeah. thing about it because it doesn't make any bodily harm it doesn't harm your body you can be in a, in a way addicted to it that's because like vincent said it's in the brain when you eat spicy food your body believes that it's getting burned and for that you get endorphins um mm. out of your brain to calm you down to make you happy and for that You get a pepper high, yeah, a chili high, where you're like, oh, um, just finished eating something hot. Whew, I think it was too much. And the next moment you say, ha, huh, I need some more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. But I think uh, in the Western world, in the Western world, about the chili, they have become a challenging. It's a macho issue. Yeah. You know, people challenge each other how much you can. Even, even my friend had the kind of uh, competition to eat 
a chili with three million uh, scoffle. One person have to eat three pieces and compete who had it the fastest. The champion finished in 11 seconds. Three million. <laughs> we, 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 we here in Asia, we never imagined that kind of level of uh, spiciness ever. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you're right. There is, but there are like different um, things going on. There's this one line of people that really do this about the spice, about the heat. And then we have the other people in Germany, we, we developed the word for it. It's called Schaufschmecker. It's, it means hot heat eater. taster. Hey, no, no, not, not heat eater, also not hot eater, but hot tasting. Also it's a combined a combination of those two words. We like to eat food that is spicy, but also you get all the flavors and you can really enjoy it. It's about enjoyment. And then you have this other type of people that are like, I can eat, eat hotter than you. Uh, but it's like everywhere, every time in the world, there are some like this and some like that. And both uh, enjoy peppers, but it has chilies, but it has in, in a different way. Yeah, but I always define the spiciness in two ways. One, the spicy because of the pepper of the spice. And the other one is spicy hot is because from the fresh chili. So there's two different things. Spicy from the pepper, is the peppery hot or the yes. chili hot? The chili mm. hot is more fierce. Yeah, I'm using the, the terminology peppers. I, I, I try to not do that, but I'm doing it because it's also the term in English, in the American English. Yeah. It's always hot peppers. It's very confusing it's, now. Yeah, hot peppers is chili. Uh, I, I would try to use chilies only. In Germany, we always only use the term chili. So, but mm. every time I switch into English mode, I'm at hot peppers, but I'm trying to go back and try to use chilies now. <laughs> so it doesn't get confusing. Okay. Uh, now we do have a few questions. Uh, I'm going to read uh, one of them first. Uh, this one is from Hamid. How do you increase and weaken its power? My capsaicin experience was on early food. Its power weakened at 90% and only 10% left. Maybe Alex can answer this. Can you repeat the last part of the question? I didn't get that. Uh, the capsaicin? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, he wants to know the, the how to weaken the power of uh, heat, the spiciness. Okay, there's different ways. It's quite as well. If you are cooking a meal, it's quite easy to use stuff with fat inside because the uh, uh, capsaicin is uh, diluted in fat uh, can, and alcohol. So you can use it like that. Um, and also by the amount you use. If you cook something and you say, it is too hot for me, then just use the half of the, pep uh, the chili pot or only a part of it, or if you want to have more, then add more. And if you have it in a solution, like a hot sauce, the same thing. Um, but if you really eat then, if, if it's then still too hot, just add something like a, a, a heavy cream. Mm -hmm. if, if it fits to the, uh, to the cooking, you know? add a heavy cream, or if you are doing something with bread or similar stuff, you can add like butter, and that would all, always make it a, a bit, um, yeah, less hot. Okay, so, that's the so tip from fat, Alex. Fat, mostly fat, right? Like fat make less hot. Like fat, yes, because it it, 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 make, it doesn't make it le less hot, but it seems less hot because the capsaicin will be in the fat, and for that, it won't get into your heat receptors on your mouth. And for that, it feels less hot. It is the same as hot, but it doesn't uh, react in your mouth. And for that, it feels mm -hmm. less. And uh, like in Indonesia, we do famous rendang, the caramelized beef curry. You start with the fresh chili. After cooking four to nine hours, it's a shifting from the chili hot to peppery hot. 
It could be because the one of the elements from Chile, what is it called, Alex? The, the, like a gas, when it's Capsaicin. fresh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. very profound. But mm. after cooking a long time, it's, the, the heat is not burning like what you eat a fresh chili. So mm. I experiment with the Western palate. After those uh, uh, cooking in such a long time until caramelized, the thing is a, is a pepper, pepper hot. Mm-hmm. So it's again fat, you know, oil or like caramelized fat. It's kind of like fat uh, take over, cover the spiciness, I think. When you caramelize a little bit with oil, then. Yeah, it changes the profile when it's, uh, it's turned into the same time, the same thing like when you are using fresh chili and the dry chili. Dry okay. chili is uh, uh, less spicy, like spicy hot than the fresh chili. Okay, uh, the question was answered by Alex, but maybe Piu Piu, Ibu Peti, Vincent, or Omilium, do you have any like your own preference of how to with the heat uh, level in our uh, taste bud? Because Indonesian, uh, some would say- Yes, I already say. Pardon? Yeah, that's what I just mentioned. Cook long time into like a example of cooking with the, the spice, a lot of tea, and change the profile into more peppery, pepper hot than the chili hot. Okay. So maybe we can uh, continue with the second question from Dini. Dini is from suara.com. This question is uh, for Alex. Uh, you do have 2,000 variety of chilies. Which uh, 10 most spicy and where are they from? 10 most spicy. That's a hard question really to answer because we are also in a high, high level of capsaicin at some point and it's hard to yeah di- differentiate um the heat at that level i always say like if you burn yourself with a flame that's 1000 degrees hot or 1200 degrees it's hard for you to tell the difference in the end and that's the same with the chilies but we have stuff like we have carolina reaper from the us that's actually measured the hottest one in the world with 1.6 million in average then we have a lot of uh, peppers coming out of Trinidad and Tobago. That they're like Trinidad Scorpion, Seven Pot. They're also above one million. We have out of India. We have um, Naga, Boot Yolokia, Ghost Pepper. The different names for it. They're also around one million. And then we have like a whole dozen different super hots that hobby uh, growers hybridize themselves because that's really trendy at the moment to create the hottest pepper by yourself in combination with mean looking gnarly looking pots and there we have many many different others but really the hottest are like carolina reaper seven pot Trinidad scorpion Budiolokia. that's like the common traditional or no, carolina reaper is not really traditional but the others are traditional really hot super hots yeah Okay. Uh, also, this one is from Irma Rianti. How many kinds of chili are there in the world? And does each chili have a different spicy taste? The profiling, I think. Yeah, if uh, nobody knows how many different kinds there are because there are so, so many different. Chilies came from South America to Europe, to Southeast Asia, and on the way, there were so many different varieties developed. Every every country where you grow pepper uh, chilies in, they develop a little bit different. Different selections were made, and I'm I'm guessing if you uh, really if go everywhere and take a lot of time, you could f- probably find 
over 10 or 12, uh, 10 or 20,000 different varieties. Uh, but it's always a big discussion. What is a variety or a variation? Uh, like what I said with the, before with the Trinidad Scorpion from uh, Trinidad, they're like a dozen different ones, like in different colors and different shapes, different heat levels. And for that, it's hard to uh, really say uh, for sure how many they are. Okay, thank you, Alex. Uh, now this one is for uh, Piu Piu. Uh, someone is asking, what is the famous spicy food in Myanmar? Oh, uh, the one, I mean, we have so many famous spicy food in Myanmar, but the one came out on my mind on top is pounded chili paste, you know? It's, uh, it's both in fresh chili and dry roasted chili. We pile in mortar, either with wine or garlic, just chili pounded, you know? It became a paste or dip, you know? So we marinate with carbohydrate like rice or noodle. And also for cooking one, we have one very famous uh, fried chili flakes. It's kind of like balacha, it's samba too. Like we also have samba, but we call balacha. So dry chili flakes with we uh, slow caramelize with a little bit with uh, onion, you know. So mm -hmm. and then a little bit fish sauce and uh, sugar or other flavor. So it became a paste, but soak in the wine so we can bring anywhere and add to the food. It's kind of, we have some bar too, actually, that we call okay. palachang, chili palachang. So it's, if you don't have any food, it's always on our shelf when I grow up, you know, and also at home, because if children don't, or uh, we don't like the food that cooked today, we just marinate rice with the uh, samba palachang, and that's okay. So that's also, very, very spicy in most of the home, you know, but it depends. So it's a spicy thing that we need to eat at least two or three times a week. It's a, it's a mess, you know, a session. So pounded yeah. chili is uh, the most chili because you just pound chili, you know, make a yeah. paste. All right, thank you. Uh, now, we're talking about the, the, the trend about spicy food. Um, the last, I think the last 10 years in Indonesia, there are several restaurants that actually sells the spicy foods with the levels. They have, let's say, spicy fried rice with level one up, up to level 10. So people normally would do like, uh, like Vincent told us earlier, the challenge. Which one can you eat? And it becomes something like very popular. Even there is one uh, very famous um, instant noodle stall that sell a bowl of instant noodle with 50 bird eye chili in it. Wow. And it becomes favorite. So it's crazy. People are starting to eat, you know, getting, try the smallest level first and then eventually upgrade it. So people are like into so much into sambal. When we talk about uh, spicy food in Indonesia, it can be a food that cooked with fresh chili. And it can also be something added with sambal as a condiment. So maybe uh, Ibu Peti, Vincent, or Om William can share some stories about the uh, spicy foods uh, with the uh, chili as ingredients uh, or as a condiment. Ibu Peti, maybe? Okay, <clears throat> actually I can really uh, share the food culture of Manado Nice, where I was born. You know, the things is, let's say, Richa Richa alone, uh, traditionally, of course, uh, is super spicy because not only the amount of chili and specifically the local chili in Manado grow in Manado, but also combined with ginger. Traditionally, it's super, super spicy. Uh, more spicy than, of course, you can get, let's say, in a restaurant Manado in, uh, in in Jakarta. 
also like woku, the amount of chili may be compared than the rest of the ingredients because woku has around eight or ten different, uh, uh, you know, fresh uh, spices and herbs, and the, maybe the chili is fifty percent. Let's say in one, let's say for one kilo of chicken, I think the chili may be around two hundred gram. So it's super spicy, and um, but of course now I want to create food like in harmony, you know, I want to taste the chili, the ginger, the lemongrass, the turmeric, the galangal, uh, uh, the kamangi, uh, the basil and lime, lime leaves. So it's, it's quite interesting. I know it's, I feel also, or I believe also food is a, is a living culture where every year or even every day is kind of changed because the food itself is very personal, isn't it? Some can eat super spicy, but some cannot, and some want to have like uh, you know uh, a balanced flavor. So yeah, that is just simple example from Manado food, which where mm. chili has amazing, amazing important role. So it can be mm. very on depends on your mood, right? Sometimes you get pits off and you feel like want to eat super spicy noodle. So like everything go, you forgot uh, what you angry, you know, to beat your emotion. So depends on your mood also like, I think the level of spiciness you want to eat might change and our age, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, think, I think the spiciness is a habit. And the later is the challenge. Like there's a it's a really small eating place in Jogja. So when you enter, you have to you have to request how many chili you want. So let's say you only have three chili, the whole restaurant will clap and shouting and bully you. <laughs> but if you order like 25 chili, everybody loves to and clapping their hand. So these things happening in Indonesia, but not general, but randomly, like, a, like just what Ade said, the, the, the super, super hot instant noodle by adding 50, 50 chili that, that happened. And the restaurant, mm -hmm. Manado Nis restaurant in, uh, in Jakarta, for instance, it's like a, a patty set, there's one, already spicy for general people, but they keep coming back. They kind of also addicted. Maybe mm -hmm. those people on the, on the other food, they don't need the, that spicy because it's all combined. The Manado food, the chili is all already built in. Mm -hmm. And in Java, it's the sambal to add on, or yes, you I... chew certain food. You chew like, a, you, when you have a noodle, fried noodle, they give you green chili, not the red chili, mm. because they, the, the green chili is not that fierce, but they like to keep biting, taking the green chili as a, veg, as, as a salad, for instance, with the spiciness. Yeah, speaking okay. about the trend, about the trend mm. in Indonesia, about the restaurant that has the one to 10 level of spiciness, I think it's more like a new promotion about the from the restaurant because now people start to want to more have more experience, you know, eating food outside. If, so for how long we have been like eating the same thing and now nasi goreng being introduced with the different levels. So the curiosity of people and also chili has this something in their brain and then they, they want it to come more and test from one to ten. But as Alexander said, it's... Rather, it's, it's impossible to, to, to check, you know, is it one, two, three? It's like there is a difference because it's the changing is slightly, maybe the first one and the 10, it's, we can, we can see, we can see the difference, but in between, it's more like experiencing and want to challenge yourself more and more and more. And this is also maybe happen in, in Germany when people want to experience something, but different way of approaching. I think this is something that promotion that it, through the restaurant and it is good because it's it hits your deep down in your memory and people will come and then taste that's that's what i think uh, okay uh, uh, so can i, can I yeah. ask a question i mean to yeah. indonesian uh, culinary stuff because for me 
Indonesian food, what's special for me is compared to others, it's like you have balance of not only spicy, spicy and sweet, you know, that's, I, I think Indonesian spicy has a little bit of extra sweetness than other sauces in Southeast Asia. Is it correct? Like yes. Uh, yes. Sauce yes. Ketchup, you yes. That's true. For instance, if you open Sriracha, that's not Indonesian palate because it's the lacking of the sweetness. Indonesia always have the sweet, sour, spicy, savory, all those kind of combination. Plus, adding like what you said, sometimes they have to put blatar. Those fermented flavor, bit stinky, but you know to enhance the appetite. That's that's Indonesia. That's unique compared to other country. I think I never, for me, I never experienced Indonesia taste in other country. You know. Yeah. Like Indonesia always most of the Indonesian chili, they must in general they have a container of. Uh, Sweetness. Okay. Um, William, there's a following question from Hamid. Uh, I think you can answer this. Uh, how do you increase the chili's power? Because if you add too much capsaicin, the food would Sir? become bitter. Sugar. No, no. The chili, we have to work on based on tradition. In Java, they practically not every dish have chili, but in Manado, a lot of dishes also built in chili. In Sumatra, almost every when you see something red, they must have a they must have a chili inside. So it's very between area to area, and then the way they introduce now in web in internationally people. Uh, people want to try some authentic food. The tendency is they're afraid a foreigner doesn't eat that much chili and they reduce. They reduce the spiciness. You know, we don't have the level of, like for instance, in, in, in so, not Sulawesi, the Manado Nis and the, the Minahasa, the level of chili is also different. So it's, it's, it's very of, uh, and it's, it's very individual. When you do soup, you don't put chili inside. When you do soto, you don't put chili inside. Okay. So this is uh, one interesting question from Dini. Uh, they, she wants to know uh, from uh, every speakers, like, do you have the best tips of every country to, to disappear the heat level in your tongue after you eat spicy foods? Because we know some would, uh, uh, would drink milk, probably. Who wants to start? Pew Pew, maybe? Uh, to, I mean, to, to reduce the spiciness after you, you eat spicy you foods, something. you want to, she want to know the drinks or any, anything after that? Any drinks or? Is it a drinks I need to tell or anything? Any tips? Like, uh, do you drink a uh, hot beverage or cold beverage or any specific beverage you, you should drink? Yeah, for Myanmar traditional, we have uh, tea, you know, black, uh, black tea or green tea together with the dinner or lunch, you know, we drink tea, hot, uh, green tea uh, instead of water normally, traditionally. So that green tea can really help make you reduce the uh, spiciness. And we have special dessert that every house traditionally in the village eats. It's a uh, jackery, you know, from palm. It's like Myanmar chocolate, you know. We call it jackery. It's a uh, it's palm sugar. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's from palm tree, you know. So yeah, yeah it's jaggery, the brown sugar. 
that we make like a ball, you know. So, and that and green tea really uh, make you forgot what you eat spicy, you know. It really go Zachary, it's for me is the best treat to recover the spiciness, you know. Okay. Ibu Peti, Om William, or Vincent, like, do you have any personal preference to this make the heat disappear? Peti, uh, for me, for me, actually, I know in Jakarta, let's say, honestly, if I go to Manado uh, restaurant, because at home I don't cook like super super spicy, uh, mm -hmm. but if I go to Manado restaurant, maybe water or coconut water. But here in the UK, if I serve food too hot, let's say for friends. Uh, I need to have yogurt and milk in the in the in the dip, always just in case. So yogurt, like natural yogurt or milk, it helps. So and of course it's common. I think in uh, I'm not sure in uh, in Germany, but in UK it's common when it's everything too hot. Yogurt or milk is help. Okay. Yes, it's, it's the same here. Uh, but since Germany is also a beer drinking country, oh. a beer loving country, um. <laughs> Many people also just if they know they're going to uh, they have an ice cold beer next to them, and that also helps a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for uh, parts, I think beer for me is like help a lot. Not for Myanmar tradition, but for personal choice, I think beer. Uh, beer is uh, helps a lot. I, I would not call what I think the biggest part when about offering someone having very spicy food, because I experienced this, they might choke. It mm -hmm. happened a lot that when they drink and then they, they choke, they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the best solution is uh, has to be between warm and warm and hot mm -hmm. drink. The next also other, and then also take a spoon of sugar. Like in, in Myanmar, using jaggery, but we use all milk as Patty said, baked patty, mm. but especially not coal because coal it will capture and make mm -hmm. make your your breathing uh, uh, throat will more shrink, more more mm -hmm. more more choke than so. It's best is the warm hot, not not fierce hot. Water mm -hmm. to to drink slowly to get rid of. Yeah, this. yeah. As me as a person who always has this problem with spicy food, yes, I'm. Uh, I try to drink many things like milk and uh, uh, cold water, but the most effective one is the warm water and drink it slowly. It's it's kind of like not makes my throat like thermo shock. It's you know when when something is hot and then with the cold. Putting together the 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 response of your throat just like like that. So warm water slowly, it's really good. And the first thing that I do is stop to eating that first. Like wave your hand and and give up. That's a good start. And then start to drink the uh, the the water because this is the the, the thing with chili. You, you want to be more and more, and then you will end up like like crazy after that. So the first thing yeah. like. Raise your hand and gave up, gave up. <laughs> it's good, yeah. it's good, it's good for people who are not eating uh, spicy. Okay, uh, so you have to be wise. So, yeah. Vincent, uh, back to you. You work, mm -hmm. uh, you do uh, sedekah benih. It's mm -hmm. like a collaborative project, which I read uh, previously. So, uh, at the stage of seed preparation, I read that mm -hmm. when you distribute the seeds of chili, Uh, mm -hmm. It will be prepared by Mang Dian uh, at mm -hmm. Urban Organic Farm in Chibogo. But then, when the plant is eight days old from planting, the plant mm -hmm. is given special care by using traditional karinding music, which is mm -hmm. Sundanese mu traditional music. Uh, can you tell us the story? Because I found this very interesting. You play music to grow this chili. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like, so, uh, Alex, we will we'll talk with, uh, Alex with it, about this. Yes. So it's it's more related into a general uh, idea of taking care of plants. So when I started this this project with Mangdian, I know there are some treatment like like traditional treatment like people doing in Indonesia. For example, uh, my grandpa said that 
you need to talk to the flower or to the plants for them to be more uh, healthy. So there is some uh, ideas. And then I, I read some journals about the experiment, like there are two different uh, same plants and then one it's being said positive thing and then the other one negative thing, one it's died. So I can see actually like the, the plants can respond into something during my research. And then I met accidentally with this group Ben, uh, group band in Bandung called Karinding Chaos. They are using Karinding as their main instrument. And then when I talk with them and explain them about my project, and then they told me about interesting fact that they uh, they know from their from their uh, ancestors. And they said actually the Karinding uh, one of the pattern in Karinding uh, instrument, the sound it's used for the for the planting and harvesting season. So the first the first thing that they said is. Uh, when you want to do the uh, planting, they will play the, the karinding to ask permission towards the land, to the microorganism, to the animal, to the spirit, to move a bit for, for a while and give the permission to human to use. And then when it grows, the, the people also going to play the same pattern because they believe that the sound can, can have a good uh, uh, effect towards the growth of the plants. So this is when I think like, okay, can you do it like with my with my chili plants? Because I really want to give something to the adopter, something different rather than only taking. So I want to make sure that 100 seeds that they collect, it's already prepared. Let's say with 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 like, like yeah, with the good hand of Mangdian as a he's a good farmer, and then the other one from the from the sound. And also I want to give. Uh, a chance for other like musician scientists to come and to to, do, to discuss something beyond only about the, the the plant itself. So, yeah, it's it's really interesting because now it's it's opening a new a new direction here in Germany. There are some scientists and musician also trying to ask. Like two weeks ago, I was making a exhibition in Berlin, so they asking me about uh, Are you sure with this with this that the sound itself is going to have an effect? And I, and I asked I asked back to them, would you like to prove it together? Because it's really interesting thing. And then we agree on on doing like something, because I will work uh, for one year for this project. And then they ask like so many of them like asking, can you also grow chili here? Because when in Berlin I didn't put uh, chili but other salad. So so this is where it started. So I can see that both uh, between science and, and, you know, traditional ecological knowledge can meet in between, you know, because this is like something it's into different part, but based on the journal that I read and some, uh, like some books, they, they, they told that actually uh, some frequency from the sound can have an effect towards the stomata in, in, the, in the leaves. So it might be, it might be true what, what the people did in, in, the, in the past for, the traditional people they use this 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 karinding to, for for the for the for the agricultural so this is where it start and i bring it to here to germany and then now it's it's opening a new uh direction and also we're trying to make a uh, food out from chili in the uh, next year and this is uh, the chili that been uh, prepared it's going to be cooked by by people from germany by people from the uh, like outside germany the immigrant to create a safe space so people can start to communicate and share the experience about the chili. So it's kind of like multi-layers projects. So yeah, I hope it's going to be went well. Like I open many, many, many possibility with scientists, musicians, chefs who wants to work with, with this through this safe space. So, so the company is a safe space actually. Yeah. Okay. Really interesting. So uh, I just I just read a question that about this um so the company. So if anyone is interested, uh, you can just like check to sedekahbenih.com. Uh, going to Alex. Alex, have you even ever heard about this kind of uh, things? Growing plants, especially chili with music? Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, uh, heard about it, talked about it a lot, met with them. Um, yeah, somebody who is doing research on that kind of things. Um, yeah, that uh, plants react to different kind of waves, and talking is one kind of wave that can uh, can influence a plant in growing. 
but never have I ever tried to grow pep uh, chilies with music playing or something like that. Um, but what I do is talk to my plants and I talk to my ah. plants a lot. And I also <laughs> apologize to my plants <laughs> if I, if I, um, go up to a plant and say, oh, you're looking so good. And then I realize, oh, and uh, tell, say the variety name. And then I realize, oh, it's a different variety. And I said, sorry, sorry, no offense. <laughs> Didn't realize that you are not the right variety, but still you're looking good. Have a good day. <laughs> uh, that, that is, I think uh, also in Myanmar, like my mother, it's kind of like bring them uh, psychology, I think, you know? You you give love and you grow love to your plant, so you care more, and you think also the same like your, I mean, ambience and everything. You you have more love to your plant mean you take care more, you know, with care with love. So plant touching and everything might be changed, you know, like the you touch. Someone you love and you touch someone you hate might be different feelings, you know? So touching to plants, even like uh, making a flower pot, you have to carefully hold the flower to last longer, you know? You can really see like plant, flower uh, go faster if you rush uh, potting or uh, put in the verse, you know? that I really, because normally I'm not that patient. So my mom, when I was young, <laughs> always say like, you have to give love to your plants and flower, you know, otherwise they won't stay with you longer. So that is more psychologically, my, I, I think I can accept like singing also the same, like the frequency might also help the air, which grow the plant and also the people around the plant might less heat, body heat and, and calm, might help the uh, temperature. Maybe the, that might connect the plant uh, quality, I think. That makes sense to me, but I don't know how much effect that uh, goes to really growing the plant, but it will not hurt to like apologize your plan, you know, <laughs> say sorry. Everybody love to yeah, receive yeah. the love. Okay. Uh, so a question from Ir Marianti. Uh, says asking if it's possible to grow chili in Germany because the weather is quite difficult. It seems to grow chili. Can it be indoors? Yes, so chilies can be grown uh, in Germany. Uh, it depends on the year. This year we had really bad weather. This year was a bad chili growing year. 2019 and 20, we had great chili growing years. There we could really grow all varieties, all types outdoors or indoors in greenhouses. You can also grow chilies on your, on your window. Um, but it's always important to have enough light and enough heat so it can grow and it can develop like it should. Yeah, but it is totally possible. And there are a lot of people growing uh, chilies all over Germany. People that are in, up in the high mountains uh, where it's really caught, uh, cold and gets really cold really um, early. My plants are now growing in an area where we have a little bit milder uh, temperatures. Uh, and for that, it's really no problem, but it depends on the weather, but it depends on the weather all over the world. If we have a bad year, it can also be bad in, yeah, in all, all kinds of places. Okay. So um, this spicy talks, really interesting, but apparently we only have one hour. I wish it can be like held for two days in a row. <laughs> just talking about food and also eating together mm -hmm. agree but yeah um so thank you so much everyone for joining i think before we uh, end up this conversation i would ask you one by one just name 
one uh, one dish that you would love to have it now with chili ingredients in it? Alex first. I would uh, probably go with a Peruvian ceviche at the moment. <gasps> Lovely, I love that. <laughs> oh, William. I like to do satay. Satay with the spicy, spicy, spicy pork satay. Oh, lovely. What about you, Vincent? Uh, instant noodle with chili because it's really <laughs> cold outside now. Like it's November and it starts raining here. Yeah, instant noodle with chili with, will be perfect. And it's also remember me to Indonesia a lot. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. What about you, Ibu Peti? Right now, I really like to have soto ayam, nice uh, uh, chicken noodles uh, soup with turmeric, a little bit, of course, with the turmeric lemongrass, but with a little bit sambal, of course. Mm -hmm. And you, you? Uh, actually, I should say that one Myanmar food, you know, but right now, since so many Indonesian friends together with me, I really want to, I miss the uh watercress fry with chili and ketchup you know kangkong 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 tumis kangkong yeah i really my mom always cook kangkong uh, whenever we uh, here also like until now we've been there like 20 years but when we visit to my parents house she make kangkong, you know, so that's, I want to eat right now. <laughs> okay, and for me, myself, I would love to eat anything spicy as long as I can <laughs> enjoy it with you guys. So uh, once again, thank you so much uh, for all the uh, participations, for all the great speakers. Thank you so much. I hope one day we can catch up with the lots of sambal or hot sauce in the middle of the table. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.